We couldn't wait any longer. We really want to show off our beautiful new chicken coop that the chickens love and we love. There are a lot of really neat features and design choices that we have in here. One little section that's unfinished, but like I said, we couldn't wait. And I'm not really the best person to tell you. Hey, 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 hey. I know. Okay, let's try that again. I'm not really the best person to show off all the features of this lovely coop. The chickens probably are the best animal to show it off, but why don't I get the person who actually built this from scratch, designed it, built it, set it all up, including a really fancy water system that I'm sure you're gonna wanna see. This is Lucky, and this one here is Shadow, and there are two new additions to our flock. And they're helping me show everything off because they don't wanna be in there with the bigger chickens quite yet. So yeah, I built this really cool super deluxe chicken coop. Um, and why don't we go over some of the features? Let's start with the watering system. Up here, we have a lovely metal roof. The roof collects the rainwater and snow and everything else, and it melts and flows down the eave to the rain barrel. There's a little filter that collects leaves and things in the gutter and then there's also a filter on top of the rain barrel and then where the water actually goes into the hose into the water bar there's another little hose filter on there and the combination of those makes it so that we don't really have to clean out the water system very much at all and there's a heater that goes inside of it that is temperature controlled so it only turns on when the temperature drops below i think it's about five degrees and that keeps the water in the tank warm the water in the tank then goes out the front and into the bottom of this bar here. It's made of PVC and it has two little chicken nipples in the side of it. And then the other end goes back into the top of the bar. And there's a little water pump that pumps water through it continually when the temperature is low. So the chickens just peck on the little nipples and they get their water and we have not had to give them any additional water since we set up the system in this coop. It's really self-sufficient. Every once in a while we have to clean the little filter that's on the hose, but that's like maybe once a month or even less sometimes, and they love it. You can see right now, Sparkle's having a drink. And it's a lot less stressful for us because we don't have to be out here bringing them water every 10 minutes, especially in the winter time. Water here when it's minus 20 Celsius freezes in like 20 minutes when it's that cold. So having this system where the water is heated, it is pumping the water through the bar so it doesn't get frozen in the bar either. We had a huge snowstorm, piles of snow all around the coop and in the coop and around the rain barrel itself. And there was a nice little melted buffer all around the rain barrel and around the water bar itself. Chickens had no problem getting water all winter long. So here's the laying box where we check for eggs. And you'll notice that there's no roof here or anything. Rain, when it hits here, it just hits the side and runs down. We don't have any issues with water getting into the coop. This edge is, is tapered so that if the water happens to get into here, it just runs out again. We have two laying boxes in the middle sections and we have two storage areas, one on each side. And this slides all the way down, gives us really good access to the laying box. We can pull out, their, we have these little plastic laying pads, which help it so that when the eggs plop out of the chickens, they don't get cracked on the wood. We have one chicken who really just likes to stand when she's laying her eggs. And for whatever reason, she's also the one that has the thinnest shells. And so they get cracked cracked. We found that these plastic laying pads really helped reduce the number of broken eggs that we got. The chickens took a little while to get used to them, but now it's not an issue at all. And you can see we can easily pull them out. We can clean them out. They like to have their feathers get stuck in there and we can find our eggs and then close it up. So in this section, we have these two doors, which instead of glass, it's just a little plexiglass panel. That way, if it ever gets broken or whatever, I don't have to deal with broken glass everywhere. So these two doors swing open and then this section actually swings down to allow us in here, hello, <laughs> to allow us in here to scrape out all the chicken poop at the end of the season. Over the winter, they're pooping, we're adding more straw. And then in the spring, a few weeks ago, we just pulled it all out and put some fresh straw in here for them. And it smells great. It never smelled at all really during the winter or during the fall or any of the other times because you keep adding straw and it's kind of a good mix of the wets and the dries. Check out the other compost video if you want to learn more about that. So this actually swings all the way down and we can pull a wheelbarrow right up to here and just pull it all right into the wheelbarrow. Um, inside, the floor is made of quarter inch puckboard, which is the stuff that you put around the 
edges of hockey rinks. Uh, the local hardware store just happened to have some extra sheets of it lying around that uh, somebody had special ordered and then didn't end up using. So I picked up a four by eight sheet of it and that was enough to do the whole bottom, which is about four by four feet, and then up the sides about 12 inches all the way around. And then on this little ledge here, which is the top of our laying boxes. The roosting bars are made from oak rods, which are one and a quarter inch round, wrapped with Cecil twine. And we have two of those and the chickens love them. And you can also see the chicken door that opens and closes automatically at night. And it'll open again in the morning just before sunrise so that they can get out and get their food and water. So inside Coop, we actually have a little camera set up there. It's actually a doorbell camera because that was just the cheapest thing that was available and it's tied into the rest of our security system. The fun thing is that I get notifications on my phone every time a chicken walks by it. So throughout the day, I'll get the notification that says, oh, there's a person in your coop cam. And I get to, you know, have a little video clip of the chickens like, you know, walking in to lay an egg or coming out in the morning to get their food and water. It's a really neat addition. I didn't think I would like it as much as I do. It's kind of a fun way to keep an eye on them, especially if we go away on vacation. It's a really easy way for us to go in and check in on them, make sure that they're doing okay and that there's no problems while we're gone. What we've used for pest protection is hardware cloth and we've specifically sourced black vinyl coated hardware cloth which gives you better visibility into the coop doesn't matter really for protection or anything but it just makes it so that when you go to look at your chickens you can see them because when you look through on the side where we don't have the black stuff there's just a small panel where we're going to put doors and i just put a panel of the non-coated stuff there and it looks significantly different you can't see them in the coop whereas with the black stuff you can easily see through it and because it's hardware cloth it's a lot more durable than your typical chicken wire would be and we've gone with a really small pitch um, we may end up reinforcing the bottom section just because we've seen a couple of foxes around our area we haven't had any issues with predators yet but we feel like with the quarter inch mesh that we've used on the bottom section could be beefed up a bit if we went with the half inch stuff then really even the big, big animals won't be able to get through that. The base of the coop actually sits on four by four posts that were cut into the asphalt that was here already. And that helps prevent against predators because obviously they can't dig in the asphalt. Or if they tried to, it would take them a really long time. In the chicken run, we've actually put sand in there, which is on top of the asphalt. There's about three inches or so of sand in there. Um, we also put some uh, chicken dust bath stuff in there, which lets the chickens do their dust bathing basically anytime they want to. Um, it's also quite sheltered underneath the coop section because they can get underneath there when it's hot out. It's nice and shady, keeps them cool. This spring, this was our first spring after a, a cold winter. And all I had to do to clean the sand that's in there was I built a little screen out of some old hardware cloth and I just took the big chunks of stuff and just basically grated the sand off of it and then threw that into the compost. That way we don't have to fill up the sand all the time. The chickens love it because they stay nice and cool. So up at the top here, there's a triangular section of just hardware cloth and that allows there to be really good airflow in and out so it's the same thing on the other side of the coop section where there's just hardware cloth at the top it allows for really great airflow it doesn't get hot in the coop um, we actually have a temperature sensor both in the chicken run and in the chicken coop and throughout the year they're rarely more than a degree different sometimes it's just ever so slightly warmer and a little more humid in the coop itself but that just makes sense because there's chickens that are in there breathing so far it's been really good i haven't had any issues with the temperature or the humidity being really really different between one or the other so it seems like the ventilation that we designed for it has been working as we hoped what happens when we go away on vacation we've got this lovely coop we've got lovely chickens we don't want them to have any trouble while we're away so with the water system we don't have to worry about giving them water or having anybody look for water really the only thing they need to do is check for eggs because for food we got one of these gigantic chicken feed holders which apparently holds 40 pounds of chicken feed that feeder is good for our chickens for probably a couple of months if we filled it all the way to the top at the front here we have the main door which has two sections it has a top section which we can hinge and open that way we can put in our garden scraps or treats for the chickens and then we have the lower section which can open so we can let them in and out it also has a little safety latch on it so we don't get stuck in the coop in case it gets closed on the front here we have two exterior lights which turn on at night automatically 
whenever the motion sensor that we have goes off. We can also set them to be cool, fun colors and patterns and things for, you know, different times of the year, like Christmas time, so they can have the, we call it the party coop for the chickens. Inside, we also have supplemental lighting for in the winter time. There's a floodlight that's in the run to give them light just before nighttime. And then we have uh, some pot lights inside the coop that give them light during the day and just extend the light hours by a couple hours on either end in the middle of the winter because it gets quite dark here for a long time. So down here, we're gonna add two more doors, very similar to these ones, just without the windows. Um, and those will just open up and give us access down there for cleaning and stuff a little easier. When we went to paint the coop, we tried originally to find special coop paint, which is supposed to be, you know, environmentally friendly and better for the chickens and all this other stuff. Um, I ordered the wrong color originally because of a miscommunication on my part. Um, ended up having to cancel the order. They didn't have it in any other colors that we wanted and it was gonna be a really long lead time. So we ended up going with just regular exterior paint. I actually picked, I think it was like a porch paint. So it's designed for floors and stuff. So it's just a little more durable. You don't have to put quite as many coats on. It's just top to bottom exterior glossy finish paint. The glossiness just helps it be easier to clean and wipe down. I find it wears better than the matte finishes. I'm gonna hand it back to Elsie now. All right, before the comments explode with people concerned for the welfare of our poor little chickens, we do have this little temporary cage that we're using to try and introduce them to the older chickens. They can stay inside the run with this over top and they can get to know the bigger chickens. We're doing a bit of a transition where they have some free time with them as well. Don't worry, we're looking very carefully we're listening the whole day through as long as they don't have the protection. We're watching feathers. Everybody's okay. So far, no injuries, although they are a little skittish and getting used to the pecking order. We're super proud of this chicken coop. A lot of the inspiration came from YouTube videos just like this. So hopefully we can pay it forward. If you live in a similar climate or you've got similar ideas, feel free to give this another look. Give us a comment, like my husband said, and however your garden grows, Keep growing as a gardener. <laughs> Come here. She's just trying to get as high as she can. Woo! Chicken. Oh, sweetheart. I know. Hi. Oh, she just sneezed on me. <laughs>